Hi everyone, welcome to another Honeystocks.com stock market outlook for the month of March. Now, it's of course been a wild week, a lot has happened. If you picked up our analysis and our work last month, hopefully you have done okay in a choppy environment. I will be touching on some of the, the charts that, that I covered last month as well. Um, of course, highlighting the market dangers, etc. But before I do the usual and switch over to our screen share to walk you through all of the, the charts and the data that I know most of you tune in for, I um, just want to take an opportunity to thank everybody for nice messages, for emails, etc. I do appreciate uh, the nice words. Now, the big question on everybody's lips at the moment is, has the market bottomed or is there some kind of collapse just around the corner? Now, this uh, week I'm going to be doing a, a deep dive, high level market insight. Um, as always, I have lots of individual names, ETFs, areas of the market that I think could potentially outperform various benchmarks. And for disclosure, some of the, the charts that I have prepared this week, uh, myself or our clients may hold some positions in some of the names mentioned. Now, as most of you know, I do not use the magical hindsight indicator. I timestamp all of my work, which is incredibly important for the field in which I work. But first thing to say is, although I do use predominantly technical analysis with fundamental analysis, etc., I'm definitely not a short-term day trader. My time horizon is generally weeks to months. I'm looking for longer structural trends in the market and I'm also looking for logical turning points in the market, which is what my work has been quite well known for over the last couple of years. Um, I'll do my, guess, my best to give some context into what we're seeing in the current environment, but some of our recent time-stamped market calls um, one year ago called the, the market crash to a T, the rotation from growth into value, uh, massive bear market rally in June, the exact market top in August, the exact top in the US dollar, uh, the market bottom in October, the bottom in bonds, the bottom in China, and of course the recent rotation back into technology stocks at the start of this year as well. And you can go all the way back to 2020 where I got our clients defensive ahead of that crash as well. So I do have a track record of being mostly correct. I'm not one of these perma bulls or perma bears. Uh, I've got a habit of just timing the broader market and I'm told I do it quite well. Um, so if you do find some value from my work, uh, feel free to subscribe to my work on YouTube and also feel free to follow and share on Twitter as well. Uh, very, very important disclaimer. Uh, please pause the video. Make sure you are comfortable with that. And uh, let's just dive into some charts. So I think a good place to start this uh, this analysis is with the yield curve. Now, we all know that the yield curve is inverted. It continues to get worse. I check on this at the beginning of every month. Yes, it is getting worse. We know that stocks don't tend to do very well in a recession, which this is a predictor of a recession. So... The problem I have with the yield curve is it's not a good tool for timing the market or for making investment decisions for my particular time horizon, which, as you all know, is weeks to months. Um, so, yes, I'm aware of the yield curve for you, uh, you economics folks. I get it. I understand it. But it doesn't impact on my investment decisions at this exact moment in time. Um, price will ultimately dictate uh, what what comes next. But the market over the last month, this is the my one chart overview of the broader market. The NYSE composite, which I think is a better uh, chart at this exact moment in time than you know the S&P 500 or Apple or Microsoft, the value line geometric index, which is uh, basically the average stock in the market. They've all just been chopping around logical levels for the last month. I highlighted this chart last month as well, uh, as well as the potential field uh, breakout in the, the small caps. But um, 
As I record this, which is on Friday the 3rd of March, the market today is taking a little bit of an upturn, which I will get onto that in, in just a second. But for me, over the, the course of the last month, the chop has been perfectly reasonable and expected. So there's not been a lot of uh, individual names that, that have really popped onto any radars because of the, the volatile nature, the up and down nature of the, the market. But I get asked all the time because Michael Burry, of course, from the big short has been tweeting over the course of the last month as well, telling everybody to sell. Uh, this time is different. But ultimately, these types of charts I, I take with a, a large pinch of salt. Essentially, what Michael Burry is anticipating is that the, the, there's going to be another crash which will under, undercut the, the COVID crash lows, which would give us a target around 2,400. Now, I'm currently not seeing that at the moment, but this is essentially the long-term uh, game that, that I think Michael Burry is, is playing at the moment, and that's why... You know, there's a lot of negative sentiment out there, but I prefer to look at the, the bond market and what the bond market is telling us. We can see that the high yield versus US treasuries is making a series of higher lows. Now, I have just posted this chart to Twitter as well. Um, and really what the, the market is, is telling us at the moment is the S&P 500 should, in theory, start to follow the bond market. So this is something that, that I'm very much conscious of. I highlighted the failed uh, breakdown, or sorry, the failed move in the S&P 500 last month. Ultimately, what's happened over the course of the last week is we have pulled back to the 200-day simple moving average, which the market has told us at this exact moment in time, this is a big level. And of course, we've seen a big rally over the last couple of days. But central to my whole market thesis is, of course, the US dollar. I believe that the US dollar is driving a lot of what we've been seeing. The, the thesis really, you know, for the, the course of the last 18 months has been uh, dollar up, stocks down, and then the moment that the US dollar started to go down, uh, stocks went up, and of course recently the US dollar has been going up, stocks have been going down. Not too overly complicated, hopefully, uh, but ultimately the, the longer term chart for the US dollar index has reclaimed those 2017-2020 uh, highs. So what we are likely to see moving forward is unfortunately, in my opinion, just a little bit more chop. Now, the textbooks tell us that with market trends, we have primary uptrends, then we have secondary counter trend moves before, of course, uh, a resumption of the, the trend. So the textbooks tell us that the, the US dollar index is, is likely to go higher. We can see that again, just to highlight the chart, that we have reclaimed those 2017 2020 highs. So I am anticipating uh, the US dollar index to continue uh, to move higher. That is a potential problem because if we look at the, the recent correlation between the volatility index and the US dollar index, we can see that they are heavily correlated. Uh, the VIX is starting to, to, to fall away here at these levels as well, which again is, is why we're getting a, a little bit of a bounce in stocks over the, the, the course of the last couple of days. And we also have the 10-year note. Uh, and since we found support at the 200-day simple moving average, again, for growthy areas of the market, this is a potential headwind. So it's really becoming a, a, stock, maker, a stock picker's market. Um, unfortunately for many of you, that, that will be frustrating, but that's ultimately what we're seeing at the moment. Uh, we're going to see, in my opinion, we're going to see areas uh, like industrials, materials, etc. probably continue to lead the way. But I will get into 
uh, some individual names in areas of the market, like I said, that, that I think it could be poised to move over the course of the next month. But the Dow is finding support at logical levels. Um, we've got the, the small caps, which, uh, as I highlighted last month, it was looking at this for a, a potential failed breakout and then a, a decline. But ultimately, the, the market is chopping. Uh, and ultimately, I, I have actually made an incorrect call on the Russell 2000 over the course of the last month. But I guess like all good analysts, we don't stay wrong for long. And since we've started to see these uh, levels reclaimed, uh, short positions ultimately um, closed out. And again, we're starting to see a little bit of strength there in the Russell 2000. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if the Russell 2000 will start to outperform the S&P 500. I do have a few charts uh, in my chart books that, that would lead me to believe that the Russell 2000 could potentially outperform if this move holds. Um, we've got the triple Qs. Again, we're still below these Fibonacci levels from the, the beginning of last month, which I highlighted. So again, we've seen declines in the triple Qs. Now, what I am going to do now is just move on to the areas of the market that, that are currently moving. Um, but if you are still here, it probably tells me that you're getting some value from my work. Um, so please, it would mean the world to me if you hit the like button. Let me know in the comments um, if you think the analysis is good, if it's nonsense, if there's any charts that you think I'm missing, any charts that you'd maybe like me to cover uh, on our next analysis, maybe in a month's time. Uh, feel free to drop me in the comments. But my work has had a lot of attention over the course of the last uh, couple of weeks because of natural gas. Now, I posted this chart to Twitter a few weeks ago, just highlighting that the average drawdown, of course, in natural gas is around 75%. And of course, we had an 80% drawdown in natural gas. Now, again, chart I've posted to Twitter today is um, for the, the natural gas uh, UNG chart. Um, of course, the, the thing is absolutely, it's, it's been ripping higher. You could have looked at the, the leveraged ETF uh, boil as well. Uh, but if we're above $8, um, I don't see what's not to like with, with natural gas. Now, of course, the, the optimal entry here is around $8. And we are, of course, approaching $10. So if you are tempted by natural gas, you have to understand that this is one of the most volatile areas of the market. It can be very, very stressful if you don't get the optimal entry point. Um, uh, but certainly our thesis here and, and what we're working with is we're bullish above $8. We put this to our clients uh, last week. And of course, it, it's doing very, very well. So... Um, I think that's an area of the market. Um, we're also been looking at areas in the coal uh, industry, uh, Sun Coke Energy, again, is broken above uh, $10, which is, is, of course, doing very, very well. Um, but I know that most of you want tech names. You want uh, areas that, that are, of course, well known. So semiconductors are getting a lot of airtime at the moment. I think the... The, the thesis that I have here is that if we do get a confirmed move, a conviction move above these levels here, I think we probably head off to test those 312 levels. Of course, NVIDIA has been absolutely massive. Again, this is one of our charts from the start of the year, uh, just highlighting that, that we were potentially uh, about to start uh, an uptrend. That's exactly what we've seen uh, and ultimately... Um, it's holding on to its 20-day simple moving average. I am very much conscious that there is a bearish divergence there, uh, but ultimately uh, I do have risk management processes in place. Um, so if the, the, the stock does decide to fall off a cliff, then of course the, the, there's not too much damage done. You'll always give away something at the end of a trend unless you are profit-taking at logical target levels. Uh, AMD, again, uh, not overcomplicating it. It's broken out above its 200-day simple moving average. There's a what I would call a confluence of 
support levels. So I think as long as AMD is above that, you know, let's call it 76, then I think you can be long AMD. Um, it's not the best semiconductor in terms of performance this year. I think we're down to maybe uh, sixth or seventh on the, the SMH list. But nonetheless, I, I do get asked about AMD quite a lot. Um, the PE ratios, of course, negative earnings growth, etc., are all factors that I take into consideration. Uh, but ultimately, if we are above those levels, I think you can be long on AMD. That brings me into energy. Um, for those of you that pick up my free weekly letter on Substack, you'll know that I highlighted the the, the charts in energy this week. Um, the, the Brent oil chart, of course, is, is chopping sideways, but I think if there's a resolution to the upside here, I think that there is the potential for an almighty rotation back into energy names. Um, so this is a, a chart that I'm watching very, very closely. Um, brings me on to some of uh, the the names that, that I think are, are are potentially again poised to to move higher. I think Tesla um, still makes a lot of sense now. Um, if you picked up again some charts that I've been putting out to social media, then I have a risk management process in place, which is basically a trailing stop loss, which has very specific parameters set for it. Oftentimes, when we start to deal with sideways chop and potential failed breakouts, etc., just a little tip is I just like to, to, to remove lines from a chart. It just keeps it cleaner and ultimately um, stops second-guessing what comes next. We all want breakouts to materialize and you know for uh, charts to rip higher, but ultimately when we, we start to work sideways, we can get a bit of an oscillation between the breakout level, etc. And it makes you second guess really good positions. Um, so ultimately, my thesis on, on Tesla is still intact. I made a bottom call on this at the start of the year, um, and it's still going very, very well uh, for myself and our clients. Apple, uh, again, I like it above uh, 160, found support. It's the AV WAP. Uh, back in January. So again, above 160 makes a lot of sense. I think there's a potential for Berkshire Hathaway, uh, good old Uncle Warren, uh, above 320 would be the level for me there. Um, now, a couple of names that might not be on your radar, but rest assured, these are massive companies, $30 billion market caps, uh, reasonable uh, fundamentals. Uh, again, PPG Industries is above 139. This is one of the charts that will be going out to our clients this weekend. Um, we have uh, ARCB, uh, again, above these levels here, around 103. What I like about a lot of charts is that if you have the ability to manage risk quite closely, and as long as you have the, the risk to reward proposition that makes a lot of sense. Um, we've had a big breakout, of course, above that $95 level. It has, has been consolidating, but ultimately we want to see a resolution higher. And I think there's about 20% uh, upside there in ARCB. A big breakout in uh, Linda PLC. This is actually provided to our clients last week. So this is one of our premium charts. Um, I think if we're above these levels, uh, then again, I think uh, LIN could make some sense there. Everybody and their dog is wondering when we will start to see the, the massive uh, share buyback kick in for Chevron. Um, I think there's a potential for it. I think we're in a bullish RSI regime here. I think we've had a, a, a decent pullback in energy names. Just going back to what I was saying about the, the Brent oil chart, uh, of course, the XLE chart, etc., which I will touch on in just a couple of minutes. Uh, but again, I, I think if you are looking to, to buy Chevron, um, this has got to kick in at some point. So again, we'll see what happens there. Um, we've got TDG. Again, this is one of our premium charts. We've been covering this since the breakout. Uh, again, it's, it's breaking out. 
above levels dating back to uh, 2020. So again, uh, aerospace and defence. Uh, we also have uh, Crocs, which has just been on a monster uptrend. Again, 50-day simple moving averages, trailing stop loss losses will always help you to remain in a trend for as long as it is paying. But please note if you are holding Crocs that there is uh, a bearish divergence. Again, I will be highlighting this to our clients this weekend uh, in our updates. Uh, but the, the trend is still very, very much intact and I think you could probably just use the 50-day uh, moving average uh, from there. Um, PLYA, again, I don't know why hotels, resorts, cruise line names have been ripping higher. Uh, again, targets met here and obviously it's, it's quite reasonable at this point, I think, to expect a pullback when the RSI gets as high as 85. Now, I have a few ETFs for those of you that maybe don't want the exposure to individual stocks. I think there's some ETFs that, that, are, that are coming into play now. Of course, over the last few days, um, I did put out this chart in our weekly letter um, in the middle of the week, so it has been holding up. Uh, call this, a, again, a confluence of support levels and XLE, I think it's logical to, to hope for a, a move to around $94. Again, the, the sugarcane ETF, again, I understand that it's not going to be one of those areas of the market that many of you will, will keep an eye on. This is, this is you know, kind of what our, us professionals do. We look at the whole market. Um, and again, I, I think there's an upside objective there to aim for, uh, which represents about 30%. Uh, boat. And now, if you've not had boat on your radar over the course of the last few weeks, let me assure you that the marine shipping names are all up in the last month, anywhere between 20 and, and 60 percent. They, they've been absolutely on a tear. Um, ultimately, we do have an upside objective there of around $37. Of course, we're going to have to overcome uh, multiple pivot levels, etc. That there's likely to be a pullback soon. There's no way that some of these names can sustain the, the, the moves that they've had over the course of the last few weeks. But again, I think you should add both to your radar for any pullback opportunity. And we have the good old commodity index, which is range bound. Again, put this to our clients last week. Um, for those that want exposure to the commodity space, I think there's about 15% upside there. Um, again, going back to what I was saying at the start, I like anything where we can define the risk quite easily. Uh, buy low, sell high, and if it breaks down, no chances taken, uh, can easily get out the, the markets. So uh, I hope you have had some value from my work. Um, of course, I do it for free, so it would really mean the world to me, again, if you would just hit the like button. Now, if you have just recently stumbled across my work for the first time, uh, feel free to go and jump onto our website at honeystocks.com. Uh, we provide memberships, which provides access to all of our premium work week in, week out. Uh, all of our high conviction investment ideas, our access to our midweek halftime report, access to our community and myself on a daily basis, uh, access to all of my chart books. And of course, if you are somebody that's in the process of maybe learning about technical analysis, process building, and you maybe act on impulse a bit too often, then again, we provide with all of our memberships complete access to our technical analysis program, and I'm told that it is among the, the very, very best. Um, but just to show you what our high conviction ideas look like, these are some of the recent ideas that we've put to our clients and members, massive, massive moves in ELF, ExxonMobil had a massive uh, move, Netflix, again, good winner, Newmont Corp, good winner, uh, Meta has been massive, uh, and of course, Tesla, which I touched on uh, just a few moments ago. 
uh, was and is continuing to be uh, a massive, massive uh, winner as well. But I think if you are somebody that um, maybe doesn't have access to a professional, etc., you might find some value from our work. Um, we have a, a mid-term uh, approach to the market. Uh, I think if you are weeks to months, if think if you're wanting to, to get away from day trading, maybe you are looking to learn a bit more about technical analysis, or maybe you're just too busy with work, life, family, business, etc. Um, maybe our work is a, a good fit for you. But I am very, very unique in what I do. All of our high conviction ideas are logged on our website for complete transparency. I would encourage you to, to go and check that. Uh, we also timestamp all of our big market calls uh, in real time. There's not any hindsight indicators there, uh, but feel free to go and check out the, the charts that we recommend to our clients. And if those are the types of stocks that you like to, to buy, we're not a pump and dump scheme. We, we don't choose penny stocks or anything like that. It's always high quality names uh, with risk to reward propositions, etc., etc. Uh, so uh, if you are still here, uh, feel free to, to, to check out our website, follow me on Twitter and YouTube, and thank you very much for watching. Thanks as always.